I was to ask you the question, what do cats, the world of comedy, Peter Sellers, going to the dentist, going on holiday, and Morgan Wise all have in common, you would probably look at me as if I was mad and say, absolutely nothing. Well, luckily, that's not the case. Because these are, in fact, all of the topics that I chose to talk about in the prestigious Kenton School Public Speaking Competition. Yes, that's right. I'm here today to talk to you, the members of the public, about the public speaking competition. Now, this is a competition where students get up in front of members of the public and give speeches on topics of their choice. You would never guess that by the title, would you? I don't know why I went up it in. However, it is not a competition where members of the public suddenly get up and give a speech of their choice, because that would be a completely different competition. It would no longer be called the Kenton School Public Speaking Competition, but would more probably be called something like the Kenton School Speaking Competition for the members of the public who believe that the Kenton School Public Speaking Competition should be open to the members of the public. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, I do feel I'm dwelling a bit on the not so important. I can tell that by some of the looks on your faces. So I'll move on. The competition is held every year at the same time, well, Roughly the same time. Well, definitely sometime in March. Oh, hang about. What's held in July once? And May and April. Right, it's a competition held every year at some point between the months of January and July. Good, glad we got that sorted. Now, as I said at the beginning of this speech, if you can remember back that far, to tell you the truth, I wrote this speech and I can't remember that far back. I'm having a bit of trouble remembering what comes next. You think I'm joking. <laughs> but yes, as I stated at the beginning of this speech, I have taken part in the competition six years running, and I can tell you all joking aside that it has helped me in so many ways. When I look back to the first time of taking part in the prestigious competition, I don't really see me. I see a shy, quiet child who doesn't really know what he's doing and wonders why on earth there's a load of people sitting in a room listening to ten other people talk. Still, I got up that first time with my little typed up speech in front of me, with my head just peering over the top of the lectern, getting a few R's from the audience. <laughs> Weren't things so much easier when you were young and cheap. <laughs> anyway, it was a new experience. It was something that I'd never done before, but it was something that I really enjoyed. And I had the audience's attention, which I did find slightly surprising, as I had chosen to talk to them that night about my nana's cat, which had recently died. <laughs> Unfortunately, my debut didn't win me the cup. There's only one feasible explanation as to why the judges didn't let me win with my speech about cats, and that must have been, well, they were dog lovers. Gotta be the only reason. So the next year, I decided to make my speech more entertaining and go for a more humorous piece. So I decided to do about the world of comedy. Peter Kerr was emerging as a top star in Britain, and so I thought a surefire way to get the audience on my side would be to shout, Garlic Bread! <laughs> Garlic Bread! <laughs> Which I did. But the garlic bread didn't win me the cup. I was angry and I was upset because I felt that I had done my best. And so I vowed that night, right then, right there, that I would never, under any circumstances, enter the public speaking competition again. So the next year I entered. <laughs> I thought that was a good way to get back at them, you see. <laughs> that year I decided to do about the man who played Chief Inspector Jacques Rizier in the Pink Panther film. Film. <laughs> films up here all night, but you know. I felt that this speech had been my best speech to date. And once the last speech was given, we all retired to the library when we were treated to the finest cheese and the finest wine, not me of course, I was under eight, all the teachers helped themselves, <laughs> the finest crisps and the finest Tesco apple juice that they could find. <laughs> once, once time had passed, we were called back to hear the verdict. I'm making this all sound a lot more dramatic than it actually was. Still, artistic license and all that. So, we were called back and it was announced that I had finally won the public speaking competition. Third time lucky, eh? And I vowed after that win that I would retire from the world of public speaking, knowing that I had at least won the competition once. So the next year, if I was asking if I was taking part, I said, yes, of course. 
fourth time through to charm as well as I was able to win the cup for a second year running. And you would probably think if you'd won the cup twice, it would probably be time to call it a day. Let someone else have a go. But as you probably realise, that's not really me. <laughs> because once I've won the competition for a second year in a row, I realised that it was less about the winning and more about having this one night in a year where you could entertain an audience by just having a chat with them. And so for the next two years, I took part in the competition. And on my last ever competition, I had the honour of winning for a third time. Finally, my public speaking years have come to an end. Although I do feel some people were glad to see the back of me. <laughs> As one time when I arrived late one night at the competition, one entrance groaned and shouted, Oh no, we thought you weren't coming! <laughs> Which was nice, but always a good compliment for still that. Anyway, I do feel I'll have to wrap this up now as I can see one or two of you trying to get to sleep. Far be it from me to postpone a good nap. So, the public speaking competition was something special to me. It made me realise what I wanted to do with my life and what career I wanted to go into. It allowed me to meet new people and form new friendships. But it told me one very valuable lesson, and that is, if you keep trying, then you'll eventually prevail. Thank you very much for listening.